All right, so I want to confirm, guys, if you mm. can see my screen. Please do let me know. Yeah, your screen is up. Okay, great. So I actually want us to make this very, very interesting and interactive. And one of the things I want us to do is, you know, as I'm talking, if you have questions, if you have uh, uh, responses or feedbacks with respect to, you know, the things I'm saying, probably if you have a question or something and you want it to just retreat, you can just put them in the chat box. I'll try my best possible to, to you know, keep up with what we have in the chat. Let me see if I can separate it. Okay, please feel free to have ask questions. I really want us to ensure that we learn and um, we have a very wonderful time here. Okay, thank you Dr. Bayer once again for this opportunity. So let me just get straight to this. Um, so basically I'll be talking about no code, you know, getting started with computer vision using mm -hmm. local technologies. But I'll be making more reference to um, a product called Direct Vision. Okay, so a little bit about myself. My name is Odema Kinde Elijah, right? And um, basically, I run a startup, and here I start a called Rec Labs. So Rec, at Rec Labs, what we do is that we are focused on enterprise level AI for businesses. And then we have about four different pilot products. Uh, we have Rex Vision, we have Tracos, we have Cinex, and we have Rec of Africa. All right. So we are going to be talking more about Rex Vision, you know, which is um, um, one of our low code, no code AI tool that we build for businesses and for developers willing to get started with, you know, in their journey as a computer vision engineer. And also, Red Vision is not just computer vision, actually. It's computer vision, NLP, you know, and the likes. But I'll be paying more attention with respect to computer vision, you know, using Red Vision, actually. Then we also have Trackos. Trackos is also more or less like a computer vision AI solution, but targeted towards sports. Then we have Cinex, which is uh, uh, one of our products with respect to large language models, you know, synthetic data generations for businesses, right? And Red of Africa, which is empowering data teams for businesses. All right, so I'm a full stack AI engineer. I'm, I'm literally not just a computer vision guy. I'm also into reinforcement learning and the natural language processing. Please, if you cannot, can you guys hear me clearly? I hope I'm not low. I hope I'm not low, right? Okay, great. Thank you, precious. Great, great. Thank you, Ayuba. All right. So basically, if you want to get to know more about my, myself, you can check my website, you know, me com. And then if you want to know more about me online or something, you can always use the handle at Elisha you know, maybe on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, and the likes for you to get to know more about the stuff I do and the likes. Okay. So local technologies, what exactly is local technologies, right? Um, I want us to have it at the back of our mind that we are going to go practical in this session. So please, I will expect everybody to be on their, you know, mobile, you know, on their laptop, right? But when we get to that point, I'm going to share some, you know, data sets, and then I will most likely share the, I'll most likely share the uh, workflow and everything. But it's going to be an interactive stuff so that we can all have a glimpse of how this is going to be. Okay, so what exactly is local technologies, right? So local technologies is basically any technological platform, maybe a product or a developer tool that you know doesn't require so much of technical expertise for you to be able to work with them, right? Uh, that's just what local low code is. You know, we also have the no code. I'm sure some speakers must, must have spoken about low code, no code, you understand? So no code is, you don't even need any technical expertise, right? In order for you to be able to work with those kind of technologies. It could be a product, it could be a developer tool and the likes, but I think because we are all developers here, we should be talking more about developer tools, right? Yeah. So, but um, one thing I also want us to take note about local technologies is that the demands are extremely little, right? Demands are extremely little uh, in the sense that 
you don't have to be a, a pro with respect to um, uh, the local technology or the technology that you want to use. So the, the, the reason why we call you local is that it doesn't demand so much of experience from you. You just have to have just a little bit of experience, maybe with coding, and then you can just follow through their documentation and then you are fine. Do you understand? But for um, extremely coding technologies and the likes, of course, that's VS Code. I know this you've got to know how to write codes and the likes. So examples of general low code and, you know, I'll be talking more about low code actually, but I just had to cite some other low code technology so that we can actually have an answer. So we have, we know, we know about bubbles, we have Notion, we have Power Apps, and then we have Yeti, but I'm sure you must have, uh, I don't know if you guys will have, you must have treated Power Apps or something, but maybe if you've not treated it, maybe you treated treat it later. Okay, so, but let me, Pay more attention to local technologies with respect to computer vision. All right, so basically, what is computer vision? In my own definition of computer vision, so this is literally my own definition of computer vision that is giving computers an intuitive understanding of its environment. That's my own definition of computer vision. Other people might have, you know, their own different um, school of thoughts or understanding of what they think computer vision is. But to me, I feel like computer vision can be simply defined as giving computers an intuitive understanding of its environment. Environment can be the human environment, basically, right? Of course, that's that's it, right? The human environment. Just see computer vision as you know, modeling the human body system, but computer vision is much more particular about the high side. Just as you move around and you're able to have you are fully aware of everything happening around you, right? You're able to make decisions because you saw this and this is not where it's supposed to be. Then you put it there and then you see an obstacle, you avoid it. So basically trying to now remodel the whole human system or more or less like a, having a clone of the human system in form of codes is what we call, you know, contribution. That is codes that can see things and then make intuitive decisions. Intuition basically means, you know, understanding. Do you understand? In intuitive understanding, you know, very smart level of understanding its environment. So basically, to be a computer vision person, you have to be very good at problem solving, right? You have to be very, very good at problem problem solving. You have to be good at, you know, what we call mathematics. Then you also have to be good at uh sorry. Okay. So you have to be good at um problem solving. You have to be good. You have to be a good problem solver. You have to be a good mathematical person, and you have to be a good software engineer. So basically, a software engineer is not a computer vision person. A computer vision person is also a software engineer. Right? So yeah, yeah, you can call yourself a software engineer, actually. All right. So why did I say you have to be a good problem solver? Because computer vision it requires you having uh this chronological um 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 capture of what the kind of problem you want to solve. Every problem you want to solve, uh, maybe you want to be able to detect uh, the cars in your environment, right? It requires you having a very solid understanding of how cars look like. Do you understand? Okay, you can't just take the video and just throw it into the AI system and you just expect it to understand, right? The reason why I call it problem solving because it's actually a very solid skill set that every computer vision person must have. In the sense that you don't just take the data and just throw it into any type of model. You have to structure the model to understand the data it's dealing with, so that it can you can have the best of information from that particular data, right? So problem solving is very very key. And then as a computer vision person, you have to be um, very solid with respect to mathematics not necessarily solid with respect to mathematics, but the thing is, as you advance in your career as a computer vision person, there are some kind of problems you can solve if you are not mathematically inclined, right? So just as simple as, you know, why is equals to mx plus c? Why is equals to mx plus c is the equation of your line. The equation of your line can actually help you solve a lot of problems and it can save your business a lot of stress or a lot of hazards, right? So imagine if you do not know how to write the equation of your line, right? 
But I'm not trying to scare you guys away from, you know, maths, blah, 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 the likes. But all I'm just trying to say is having a little idea about mathematics and then be, op be open to learning. Do you understand? Then also as a computer vision person, you have to be a solid software engineer. Software engineer in the sense that you have to understand uh, data structures, you have to understand algorithms, data structures and algorithms. You have to understand how to, you know, because writing codes is literally trying to connect boxes or creating a black box that actually solves a problem. And then you know, okay, you need this particular component mm -hmm. and then you're connecting this particular component to this particular component in order for you to get your optimal result. Right, so data structures can actually help you in uh, structure out your problem solving and then give you the best of result as a computation person. So of course, I would recommend you knowing Python um, or how, right? But it's much more easy for you to do computation in Python. Um, in um, then of course you need to know OpenCV, you need to know PyTorch. There are a lot of tools out there, but I'm just put, I'm just picking out the most fundamental of everything you need to know as a computer vision person. Okay, so now let's get to computer vision and local. That's computer vision. We've spoken about local, we've spoken about computer vision. So now let's talk about you know computer vision and local technologies, right? So local technologies that strictly uh, so imagine everything I just said right now, the mathematics, the, uh, let me go back, the mathematics, the problem solving, the software engineering and everything. Imagine somebody building an entire platform whereby you do not need all these technical experts, or you just need to have a little bit of idea, right? With respect to some of all these things, right? So imagine somebody building an entire platform like this whereby you don't have to stress yourself about how to solve the problem, you don't have to stress yourself about the mathematics. You don't have to stress yourself about the data structure happening behind the scene, about the codes and everything. That is exactly what we call no code. That is, you're not even writing anything. All you just do is just drag and drop, and then you have your results, right? And you deploy. But low code in the sense that it is low code in the sense that it requires a little bit of some expertise from you, right? But they've taken care of the technical details or the extreme technical details that could serve as difficulty in helping you drive home your points or you know deploying your apps. Do you understand? So that is exactly what we call low code. But of course, we're going to do some practical stuff and we are going to be writing a little bit of code, but not that much. So um, so what are the kind of developer or business tools that are low code centric that are strictly computer vision, or you can actually do a lot of run a lot of computer vision tasks, right? We have Flow, we have V7 Labs, we have i 3 You can you have you can check out all these platforms actually online, right? You see that these platforms are you know computer vision centric, and they are you know local. You know we have Azure ML, we have Big ML, we have Super Notate, we have Sky Engine, we have Supervisely, right? Then we have some businesses that are also, there are actually a lot of platforms, a lot of technologies, a lot of solutions that are doing this local thing, right? So we also have businesses like Visual.ai, right? We have Nike, mm -hmm. we have Abacus.ai, right? These are interesting businesses that are leveraging the usage of local technologies to power up a lot of other businesses Right, with respect to their computer vision problems and the likes. I hope we are following, right? Guys, is it making sense? Guys, am I making sense? If I'm making sense, just give me a thumb up or give me some level of reaction. Hope I've not lost you guys. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Uh please, if there's any question, you know, you can just you can drop the, you know, just up have them piled up. I'll be glad to have. I really want to give. It, I want to give a lot of attention to questions, and I would. Uh, I'll be glad to answer. I'm hoping I'll be able to answer. Okay. So basically, let's talk about Rect Vision. Luckily, mm -hmm. my team happens to be the, you know, creator of Rect Vision, which is um, a typical use case that we're going to be working with today. So Rect Vision. What is Rect Vision? Rect Vision is an end-to-end 
low code. So resolution is basically a low code and no code platform, right? For contribution, for NLP developers, and for businesses willing to create their own custom AI. So if you have somebody that you do not have so much of technical expertise with respect to technical uh, computer vision, maybe you are just getting started with respect to tech, uh, computer vision, you don't need so much of technical expertise with respect to building your own custom AI. But I'll be paying more attention with respect to computer, uh, computer vision here, right? Uh, though you can also run NLP tasks, you can do some other stuff on the platform, but I'll pay more attention to computer vision. I'll be doing the most fundamental thing in the call today with Red Vision. So basically, Red Vision does not require you having technical expertise. And also, if you are somebody that you have some level of technical expertise, then uh, there is also um, the low code parts whereby you just have to hard, you just have to write just a few lines of code or something, right? So that you can do object detection, segmentation, text annotation, video annotation, auto labeling, training and deployment, then hosting of your AI, all on Red Vision, right? Then of course, the most important thing that you need to be concerned about as uh, a person that wants to use our platform is to take in your data and then upload, that's all. You understand? It's that simple, okay? It's that simple. So Red Vision is basically, uh, you can check us out, that's redvision.com. Right. So when you check, go to redvision.com or let me, if you want to go to redvision.com, you basically see everything you need to know about, you know, Red Vision, the local side and the likes. So guys, uh, right now at the point where we are going to be going practical with, um, and I really want us to, I think I still have some, I want to keep the time so that we can actually, uh, so I want us to take note of these URLs. So, um, uh, we are going to be trying. We are going to try and build um a cat dog uh, classification model, right? With direct vision, right? So please, guys, let's try and uh, get on our laptops. Maybe open up a new tab or something, so you can go to hub.redvision.com. So let me just let me just you guys can, can tag along with me here. Let me just, so basically this is redvision.com. So you can just look at my screen or something. Then you can click on the login. There's a login button over here. I hope you guys can see it. Please, if you are not getting me, you can let me know something. If you are not getting me, you can let me know. I hope you guys are getting what I'm trying to say. So you can click on that login button. We can see your screen. Okay, great, great. Okay, because I don't want to lose anyone of you guys. All right, great. So basically, you can create an account, sign up, right? Go ahead to sign up. But let's stick to the basic plan because the basic plan is kind of free for you to be able to do the fundamental thing on this call. Uh, or other plans that are kind of paid, you know, we have to charge you for training and a lot of other things. All right. So um, you can create your account, enter your first name, enter your last name. Then if you have an email, maybe a work email or maybe a personal email, uh, enter your work email. Then you can enter your password also. And then confirm your password and you can sign up. But I already have an account, so I'm just going to go ahead to sign in. So how many of us are here? If you are here, just say hi with your hands mm -hmm. or maybe just comment, put the comments. Uh, I just comment on the in the chat over there. Okay, there's only one person that is telling me that we are following. So if you are here, just let me know that you are here, please. All right. So. Okay, great. Okay, are you by Giri? Um, I hope I pronounce your name very well. Okay, great. We are creating an account on site. Great. All right. Should I keep going? Okay. Yeah. The guys can keep going. So the guys on site are already creating the account. Oh, there are people on site to help them out. Oh, great, great. Ah, thank you. That makes my work easy. Uh, my I was thinking I was. All right. So basically, we are going to be creating. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me just share the URL to some of all these things. Let me 
see. So I'm going to drop the URL in the chat or something. So you can. Okay, so. so guys, if you check the chats, you would see the link to login or to sign up because I want you to be aware, like follow along with me. Then there's a data set we are going to be using. You can download that folder. It's about, I think about 130 images of both cats and dogs, right? Right. So, but we might not be able to do a lot of do annotation on this call. So I will just go straight to, then um, there's um, a Google Collab notebook, right? So I will explain the reason why we're using Google Collab right now, because it's it's low code. We're not doing no code. So I'll also talk about the no code part. But let me just go ahead. So I've shared the link in the chat. You can find every information you need right in the chat. All right. So you can just tag along with me on the screen. So you can click on get started. Once you click on get started, you can give the project a name, maybe cats and dog. Maybe cats and dog. Then select annotation because this is a basic plan. So basically all you can do is your subject detection. Then we are going to be labeling both cats and then dog. So you just type in cats. So in that label side, you just type in cats, then you press enter. So it's going to create something like this. And then you type in dog and then, then press enter. Then maybe it's a data set that is going to cost, that's going to take you maybe three, four, five days or something. Uh, you can just put maybe five weeks, but it's in weeks. So you can just say uh, one week, then you can create your project. So just tag along with me. So once you are done with that, you can now, you will see this current screen that I'm seeing. And then you can click on hard files. There are two types of files you can have. You can have video files, you can have image files. But I'm just going to go ahead to select the file. And then, so it's going to open up my uh, stuff here. So let me just see. Uh, so I have the scat and talk data sets already downloaded. So I've dropped the data sets on the call. Um, I mean, in the chat, so you can basically download everything and then upload it. So once you have it, then you can just click on everything, like Control A or something. Select all the images there, and then you click on upload. So once you click on upload, then you can just once you click on upload, it starts uploading all the images for you. So let's just wait a few minutes. For the upload to be complete. So please make sure you have a good or strong internet connection. Please, I can, I can, please, I can. This the data set drop. I was out because Isaiah writes. Um, basically the data set. Okay, you are out. Let me reshare it on the. It's in the chat actually. All right, so basically, you can see my screen that the data set has started uploading or something, right? But let me just, because of time, let me just, um, oh, I think I, I'm have to wait for it to finish uploading before I leave. Today. But let me see if I can log in again. Then. Because I've already done it already, I want us to do some other things actually. And it's time, and I want us to also have questions and answers. All right, so. I think I have the data set here. So you can always go back to your project. What am I going to fill in annotation choice? Annotation choice is a drag and drop actually. Annotation choice is just click on object detection. You can see my screen, Ayuba. Just click on annotation to use a drag and drop. It's uh, a drop down. Just click on object detection over there. All right. So let me just go ahead to the no code. So I already have the data. Okay, I think this is a different data set. Let me go to, okay. So I'm going back to my previous projects. I've annotated the data set. So you can basically see the, all the data that you've annotated, both annotated data, then the unannotated data also. 
then you can click on annotate or something. Once you upload it, it's going to show you the, it's going to bring you to this tab, all right? It's going to bring you to this tab and then you can see all your images here. You can see all your images. Yeah. Are you guys following me? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, we are following. Okay, great. So once you click on an image, once you click on an image, let me delete this label. You can delete the label over here. You can actually delete the label. If you can click on this, it's going to delete the label. And then you can click on the bounding box, right? So once you click on the bounding box, you can draw a bounding box like this. Drag, like you hold it and then drag it to the hand. And then you can either say, oh, cat, dog, mouse, or something. And then if the label is not there, maybe you have a new label. You can say something. Maybe it's um, Jack or something. Maybe you have a, a label that you want to, that's called Jack. Then you can just click on this, you know, checkbox icon here. But since I already have that already, I have that done. And you can kindly, you can basically see the total number of cats you've annotated and the total number of dogs you've annotated in your platform. So I think I have over 86 dogs annotated here, and it's 95 cats annotated here. So then you can see the percentage of images that you've annotated. So I think I've annotated over 128 images, just five are unannotated. Then you can click on the train data. Then you can start training. But this feature actually, because it's a basic plan, right? It's because it's basic now, you can actually go ahead to train because it's free. So this training part is actually what we, we charge people for this, we charge businesses for this. But let's just go to the low code. Let's go to the low code part. So we've done the annotation by now. Just follow, just follow along with me. I know it's going to take a lot of time for you to do the annotation. But also if you're if you if you upgrade to other plans like maybe the um um the next plan, which is the premium plan, right? you kind of see what we call auto annotation. So you just annotate maybe like one or two images and then you click on auto annotate, then it's going to, have to annotate the rest. And then you can go ahead to train. Then if you want to export, add more images, you click on this icon here and then you click on upload images. If you want to share your project with people, to be able to access, you can share it. Then you can now click on export. Then export in the sense that, okay, you either want to train your model, you want to download it, right, into your local machine, or you want to go ahead and train it. I just have a few minutes and I want us to take questions. So I might just have to rush through all of this. So if you want to download, you just put the train test split, you know, 50% training, um, 30%, 30% test, and then maybe 20% validation, you know. And then you can click the exported format. Maybe you want to train on your local machine. You don't want to use uh, Red Vision Cloud or you don't want to use Google Colab. But in this case, we are going to use Google Colab. Then you can click the one you want. Then you click on export project. So once you click on export project, it's going to send you a download link, a zip file, so you can download it to your local machine with the export data, the, you know, the format you chose. All right, so if you check your email, once you do this, if you check your email, you'll see the, the data as that you. But let me go ahead and actually export this thing to Google Colab. Are you guys following me? I hope I've not lost. I really wish we can do two hours doing this thing. Hope I've not lost you guys. Is yeah, this thing yeah. making sense? You are following, but we are not. Yeah. How can you be following and you're lost? Ah, they said they are lost too. You guys will practice. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let me just let me just because of the time, let me rush through it. Then we are gonna take oh I'm a bit fast. I'm so sorry. I just have I just have about 10 minutes left and I really want to just I'm gonna come back to this, okay? So I would you can ask the questions. I really wish you can do two hours doing this, but you know, we just have a short time. All right, so I'm exporting to, to Google Collab right now. The, the most important part is the Google Collab site. Annotation, blah, 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 there's no require coding. You can get that, okay? You'll get it, don't worry. So once you click on export annotation, it generates a project token for you. And then you can copy that token and then go to your continuous reward video again. Thank you, Azaya. 
I'm so sorry, guys. I really wish I can. I really wish we can. Uh, so let's go into the Google Collab. I've shared the link to the Google Collab. Google Collab Notebook, right? So because I've trained the data, so you can just run through the Google Collab and then you'll be fine. So all you need to do is just to install Red Vision, pip install Red Vision. So I'm just going to go ahead to pip install Red Vision. So I just have like 10 minutes more or something. So pip install Red Vision, I think my network, okay. So it's already installing Red Vision. Um, so once it's done installing Red Vision, then you can import Red Vision as RV. Then from Red Vision imports data, the data parts, uh, the data model in Red Vision is for you to be able to have access to your data set. And then, you know, then the modeling parts is for you to be able to train with Red Vision actually. So basically, we call it low code because you don't have to write so many lines of code. It's very simple and then straightforward to get. Don't worry, I'm going to. I want to take questions. Yes, we can use Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab. So pip install. So now I've installed. So I'm going to import transition as RV. So once Redvision is imported, then you can do from from Redvision imports data slash models. Then um, this data site. So now let's download our data sets by just entering our project token. So from revision, the data import converter. So basically, maybe you want to use any type of converter, maybe a label me JSON or something. But because we are going to be trying a YOLO, we are going to, we are going to be building a YOLO model, right? So I'll say I want it in YOLO TXT. So once I once I trigger that, it's going to ask me, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see my screen clearly. So it's going to ask for my project token. And once I provide my project token, it's going to start downloading the data set. So I've annotated just 128 images. So it's going to download the only the only data that I've annotated. Do you understand? So if you've not annotated any data, it will not download anything. Do you understand? All right. So. 24%, 25% done, so it's still downloading. So, so we just we just this line, this instruction that is models.yolo v5 into bracket, the number of classes, image size, the batch size, number of epochs. So I've given some, I've made some default numbers here. So project directory here is going to be slash content, you know, that's Google Collab. The number of classes because I was trying to annotate, you know, cat, dog, and mouse. I'm dealing with three classes. That's cat, dog, and mouse. But the data that I sent to you is strictly cat and dog. Do you understand? So mine is three here. Yeah. Yours can yours will be two. That is cat and dog. Then the image size you can put it at four sixteen. Then back size can be at sixteen. Right. That is the amount of data we are feeding into. So I think it's done. The number of epochs, 150, like we want to run it for 150 training epochs. Then project name, you can just give it a project name, right? Cat and dog, so that when it's training, it takes it great then. So we just use two lines of code, right? Okay. Sorry? Yeah, so this is me prompting you that I have about four minutes to go. Hey, God. Guys, I'm so sorry, I have to rush this. So, so four minutes. Okay, let me just reduce the epoch. Let me just train the model. So once I trigger the train model, now you see. All right, so it has started training the YOLO V5 model. So once it's done training the model, then you can run an inference. So I'm just gonna pick uh, an image here in my data set. So it's still training or something. Training is not going to take so long, actually. So I'm just going to take a test data. Let me just pick an image here. I really wish we, guys, I'm so sorry. I really wish we can do two hours. But you know, we have to rush this so that uh, we keep to time. Yeah, that speakers on the way. All right, so once it's done training, right? Let's just wait for it to train or while it is training. Once it's done training, then you can specify the image you want to test, or you can specify 
you can specify the if you wanted to train if you wanted to predict on all the images in the test folder all you just have to do is just to you know put the folder directory once you put the folder directory to predict all the images in the test folder so it's going to run predictions for them and it's going to save them in a folder called slash detections you understand all right then once you're done then you can basically visualize one of the um the training results do you understand guys you have the notebook okay so you can you don't need to make any changes or something just to run the stuff and you'll get it and then you can see it's calling this a cart so this is a, this is a test you know test uh image and the likes all right so it's still training actually it's still training but spend that time i just have a few more minutes um can we take questions or maybe if you have anything you want me to address or something i would love to have those questions actually all right um thank you so much Elisha. we are sorry about the short time i know you have lots to take them for like three hours to hear about Okay, yeah. so we have some questions on site. So I want to encourage those online to please drop your questions. For on site, I have two questions with me right now, and I'm just going to read them. Would you like to take them together, or should I go one after the other? After the other. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not complete. <laughs> okay, so the first question is What challenges may arise when using low code in terms of scalability and performance, especially in large scale computer vision projects? Did you get that or should I do by reading? Yeah, so you say what challenges can arise, right? Um, in terms of scalability when you are doing low code and the likes. So there are two things involved, right? If you are trying to, that kind of question is much more related to businesses, right? That are trying to leverage or maybe your low code technology to be able to build their computer vision model or their detection model, right? So, um, in terms of scalability, the challenges that might arise, they, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be because if it is low code, okay, if it is low code, they shouldn't be if it is no code because the no code is should, should be a CI CD process that should take care of data and data annotation, auto annotation, modeling of your system, right, and deployment. So that all you would have, all you would have access to is just a model deployment link. Do you understand? For instance, if you are using Red Vision for uh, to build, um, maybe as a business, to build a solution and you want to deploy it on Red Vision Cloud. So there are actually two different clouds in Red Vision. You either deploy to Google Cloud, which is what we are trying to do, or you deploy to Red Vision Cloud. So when you deploy to Red Vision Cloud, for instance, it's going to ask you for all these parameters. Once you put in all these parameters, that is if you know them. But if you don't know them, it can suggest. Right, and it's just going to go ahead to train and ensure that the performance is optimal, and then it deploys for you. So with a deployable link and with some other packages and the likes, maybe as a developer you want to integrate it to your mobile app, it takes care of all of those challenges, right? But if you're a low code person, the only challenge you might have is maybe there's a bug in the in the package or something or maybe whatever. But we try our best to ensure that there are no bugs in Red Vision, right? such that you can be able to train your model flexibly and the likes. So I believe that, for instance, with Red Vision, there, should, there shouldn't be any challenge for you using the platform for your local development as a developer. I hope I've been able to answer it very well. Thank you so much. So you are saying that we can, we can guarantee 100% that Red Vision will not give us any challenge, right? It's only God that can guarantee 100%, but we <laughs> are our best. Okay. <laughs> So moving on to the second question. So what considerations should developers keep in mind when choosing between traditional code-based approach and low-code approaches? So what are the things you keep in mind when we are using a low-code instead of the traditional code-based approach? Anything? Okay, so what are the things? Okay, I'm already running different. So I hope you guys have seen my screen so that we can actually have a, um, a test stop. So you said, what are the challenges we should keep in mind if we are to consider, sorry, is it challenges? What are the words, sorry? I was distracted. What? Considerations. Considerations to keep in mind if you are to consider a, uh, a, a traditional approach to what? 
to a low code approach? Uh, consideration. Traditional approach, if you are talking about traditional approach, that is you have to write the code yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are using low code, right, is more or less like you're not really writing so much of code. Um, if you are using uh, the traditional approach, you definitely have to be technically, technically sound, right? To understand, you know, how all these things connect with one another. Do you understand? You have to be technically sound to understand what you are using with your Lovi file. You have to be able to understand how to feed in the data into the system, read their documentation, and work with all those things. Do you understand? But if you are a low code person, all these things should have been taken care of, right? Just like Red Vision, all these things are taken care of in the sense that all you just have to do is to, from Red Vision dot uh, data, uh, from Red Vision um, imports models, and then from Red Vision dot data imports converters. From Red Vision imports models. Once you import that, the models do you know you find and they pass in the parameter. And every other thing is taken care of. Do you understand? So that's the local approach. That's the track that is different from traditional approach. Traditional approach, you have to be much more conscious of what you are passing into the argument. But if it is a low code approach, they would have given you an idea of just passing this, passing this, just like I said in the call and everything. I hope I've answered the question. Well, I've got only one last question. So, uh, and I want to say one word because I think the time is up already. So, how do we determine the accuracy and performance of the model? Let me give you a sentence. So, how do we determine accuracy and performance of the model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, there's what we call. So, if you look at here, if you look at my screen, there's a check these for training logs. You know, it's going to tell you, specify the directory for you to go and check the logs. We you to see the accuracy of the, of the system. And then, if you want to also check for the training performance, you will see the graph. Or maybe you want to log the data of the training performance. You can only you know, plot it as a CSV file. You can actually have access to everything, right? Yeah. Let me see if I can just. So once it's done training, it's going to tell you the path to where all the log files, the training files, the um, the the training logs, and every other thing that you need to be aware of with respect to the accuracy, um, precision, and all. So um. Let me see. Um, Yolo V5 runs, train, um, then cut and dog. All right, so basically you are gonna see the the, the confusion matrix here. As you can see, you see the F1 score, the PR, PV, blah, blah, blah. Then result of CSV or result of PNG, which is the graph and everything. So you can just download it and then view it. You know, we just trained for just few epochs. Right, we only train for a few epochs, okay, so uh, that's basically how to actually check it out. Elijah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so yes, uh, I really want to appreciate your time. I mean, we really, really apologize for the short time, but we have to go now. So what we'll do is, if you have that question, we'll send it to the mail, and then you can provide the responses. So the Thank other one. To the right vision documentation, I think you can just drop that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's a documentation. Um, oh, do I remember the docs dot direct vision docs dot direct vision dot com slash. Okay, so let me just drop that slash docs slash intro. All right. So thank you so so much. So all we have for the organizers, we really want to say thank you for the session.